Hello, I'm Fred Schneider, and you're tuned in to The Weekly Report, a look at news and insight related to programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The 311 Call Center recently began accepting service requests sent through Twitter, a social networking platform. Residents may tweet service requests to the Twitter handle at KCMO311, and a 311 call center representative will respond with a unique case number. The 311 call center Twitter account can be accessed at twitter.com slash KCMO311. With springtime arriving, now may be a good time to get an energy audit of your home. EnergyWorks KC is a program that provides residents and businesses with individualized and economical energy efficiency upgrade recommendations. To learn more, visit kcmo.org EWKC. Now let's check in with some of our city departments for information and insight. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with the Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department. Our parks and facilities offer a wide variety of events and programs for you and your family to enjoy this spring. For example, come out to Bartle Hall on March 22nd through 24th for the 2013 Greater Kansas City Home Show and Flower Lawn and Garden Show. Residents interested in sprucing up their home or yard this spring are guaranteed to find many clever decorating, design, and remodeling ideas at this Kansas City tradition. The Flower Lawn and Garden Show is sponsored by Parks and Rec and will also include an entertainment stage, children's art activities, and information about our programs and the city's KC Green initiative. To learn more, visit kchba.org or call 816-942-8800. The 23rd Annual Blue River Rescue is Saturday, April 6th from 8 a.m. to noon at Lakeside Nature Center in Swope Park. This is Missouri's largest one-day cleanup project and requires help from volunteers. Residents are invited to get a group together to help beautify the Blue River by planting trees, picking up trash, and checking the quality of the river water. Refreshments will be served and all volunteers will receive a t-shirt and gloves. Visit lakesidenaturecenter.org for more information. A holiday unique to Kansas City, Fountain Day, will be celebrated on Tuesday, April 9th at 11 a.m. On this day, all Kansas City fountains will turn on for the season. This year's Fountain Day festivities will take place at The Children's Fountain, located at the intersection of North Oak Trafficway and Missouri Route 9. The Children's Fountain was dedicated in 1995 and features six dancing, playful bronzed boys and girls crafted by Kansas City sculptor Tom Corbin. It is one of 48 publicly owned fountains maintained and operated by Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Check out our facilities, amenities, and programs for free on April 13th and 14th during KC Parks Community Center Spring Open Houses. On Saturday, eight community centers will showcase their spring and summer programming options from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., while Lion Creek Community Center will offer free open ice skating from 2 to 4 p.m. On Sunday, KC North, Southeast, Tony Aguirre, and Hillcrest Community Centers will open from noon to 6 p.m. Free open ice skating at Lion Creek will take place from 12.20 to 2.20 p.m. For more information about these and other parks and recreation events and activities, visit kcmo.org parks and click on the events calendar. Or give us a call at 816-513-7500. The Health Department's Tobacco Use Prevention Program has resources available for those ready to quit. Some of the first steps you should take when you're thinking about quitting smoking are making a list of the reasons why you choose to quit smoking. Um, some of the other ideas are making a list of your triggers um, and what time of day and the occasions that you smoke. 
Um, this may lead to you discovering some of your barriers when you're thinking about quitting smoking. The next thing you should do is plan a quit date. Write it on the calendar, talk to your family, your coworkers, your friends about your quit date. Have them support you and encourage you in that decision. The next thing you should try or the next thing you should do is talk to your family physician if you plan on using some medications to help you with the withdrawal symptoms. And that could be lozenges, patches, um, gum, and some of the new medications that are out there on the market. Um, that way, if you have any underlying medical conditions or are taking other medications, this will help you discover what's right for you. Even if you're not ready to quit, please protect the health of children by not smoking around them. For more information on the Tobacco Use Prevention Program, call 816-513-6211 or visit our website www.kcmo.org slash health for tobacco cessation resources. Welcome to Envision Arts and Culture KC. I want to be sure this city is meeting your cultural needs because you, the citizens of Kansas City, stand to gain the most from the local arts and culture scene. I invite you to be part of Envision ACKC and to help shape the city's cultural future. KC has a distinguished arts heritage. We are the birthplace of jazz and the home to musicians such as Count Basie, Charlie Parker, and Mary Lou Williams. Walt Disney attended the Art Institute and created Mickey Mouse here in his first studio. Thomas Hart Benton taught and painted here. This heritage is impressive, but Kansas City's future is even brighter. $1.5 billion has recently been invested in our major cultural institutions. Stakeholders are considering plans for a downtown arts campus and our city boasts vibrant arts districts in the Crossroads and 18th and Vine. So now we need to create a plan to take the arts to that next level. We know arts are important to you. Nearly half of Kansas City's residents support the performing arts through their attendance at events, monetary donations, or through other outlets. Because of that dedication, total arts participation and spending are much higher here than the national average. We recognize that the arts have even more to offer our city, and we want to know your thoughts. So please visit envisionackc.org for more information and ways to connect. And now, a few words from the chair of the Mayor's Task Force for the Arts, Mike Burke. The Mayor's Task Force for the Arts is designed to address the need for a public aspect to the development and promotion of our city's cultural framework and to enhance Kansas City's reputation as America's creative crossroads. The work of this task force and resulting report will create a path for the city to move forward to deeper engagement with the citizens of Kansas City that will make the arts more purposeful, rewarding, and meaningful for our community. Our outreach campaign, Envision ACKC, is truly about you. The arts can play a greater role in our city and in developing our neighborhoods, creating jobs, and enriching our children's lives. We need your ideas to help make this possible. Ultimately, this is about what the arts can do for our city, Kansas City, and what Kansas City can do for the arts. Please sign up at envisionackc.com and tell us what you think. We're listening. What do we mean by arts and culture? We used to think of the arts as a pyramid with the symphony, opera, and ballet on top and pop music and television on the bottom. We now see the arts as a level playing field with each expression occupying a different place, all important, all valuable. All art forms and cultural expressions are included. Artists and other creative individuals are at the center. So what are we planning about? Envision ACKC is interested in strengthening the role of arts and culture in neighborhoods, urban revitalization and placemaking, job creation, 
youth development, education, and promoting Kansas City as a national cultural center. So get involved. Go to envisionackc.org and contribute your ideas and see the ideas of others as we all work together to create a new future for the arts and culture of Kansas City, Missouri. Last year, Kansas City had over 4,000 auto break-ins and they typically represent 25% of crimes reported. But there's a simple thing you can do to lower the risk of becoming a victim. Put your junk in your trunk. Phones, laptops, GPS units, iPads, anything of value that can be seen lying in your car is an invitation for a break-in. Most likely a thief won't break into a vehicle unless there's something to steal. Forgetting to place your items out of sight could cost you, as Katrin Hoyser, owner of a fair restaurant, can attest. I left a bag that was of no value. It was my kid's bag with books in it in the back seat. Didn't think about putting it away, and somebody felt like they needed to break the glass and take it. We addressed it. Susan Ahrens from the Community Association really addressed it with the uh, campaign, Put Your Junk in the Trunk and we haven't had any problems in the last months. There's been great cooperation with the community. The police has been wonderful. They, there's been an increased police activity. They patrol the lots. The community in general has made an immense difference. We haven't had any problems in quite some time now. There is a simple solution to it. Put your junk in the trunk. The merchants and residents of the Crossroads District have initiated displaying Put Your Junk in the Trunk posters in parking lots and shops as a gentle reminder to lock your valuables out of sight. The program has been adopted from Minneapolis, Minnesota, where it has made a significant impact. Renee Allen, Crime Prevention Specialist of the Minneapolis PD reports, since the program's inception, they have seen a huge reduction in theft from autos. Efforts are underway to make it a citywide campaign. If you would like a junk in the trunk poster, contact the Crossroads Community Association for price and sizes. So I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis reminding you to put your junk in the trunk. Looking ahead, the city's spring curbside leaf and brush collection begins the week of April 1st for residents in the city's central zone. Residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb on the regularly designated trash pickup day. Collection for residents in the south zone will be the week of April 8th and pickup for residents in the North Zone will be the week of April 15th. To find out when your pickup day is, visit kcmo.org slash trash. The city will participate in Earth Hour and encourages residents and businesses to join in by turning off all non-essential lights on Saturday, March 23rd from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. To learn more, visit earthhour.org. Wage earning residents have until Monday, April 15th to file their 2012 earnings tax returns and pay any tax due. This deadline also applies to the profit earnings tax for businesses on a calendar year accounting cycle. Wage earners may use the city's free online system, which can be accessed at kcmo.org wage. Although the Revenue Division has mailed a postcard to residents with instructions on using the online system, taxpayers who prefer to mail in tax returns can download forms online at kcmo.org finance or call the Revenue Division at 816-513-1120. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please, Log on to kcmo.org, scroll to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the Weekly Report for links. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Fred Schneider. Have a great week.